Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen. This is Tinker's Construct 2. Today we're going to be covering embossment, one of the newest things that's been added to Tinker's Construct 2. So I will be first explaining it and then going over a few examples of how this is going to work, uh, but I'm not going to go over like every single different kind of tool uh, combination. There's a, a gazillion out there that you could go with on this. First, let's go with an explanation of what embossment is. If you have your materials in your book that is usually spawned in with you, then you look in here, you go under your uh, modifiers section at the very end, you have this new modifier called embossment. Click on that and you can see here it says take a tool part and emboss it onto the tool. It's like replacing the tool part, but better. The tool gets the traits of the part in addition to the already present ones, but not the stats. And therefore it adds a trait of another part. Traits are, are equal to swapping the part. The embossment is final and can't be changed and it requires no modifier. So you can still use all of your modifiers uh, if you do this route. Now, how to do this? That, that was a little bit vague on how to do it. There we go, embossment, there we go. Uh, it, it, it looks interesting here. You can see there's like a little uh, tool forge here. Uh, so we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So basically you're going to need at least one of each of the different slime crystals, green, magma, and blue, plus a block of gold, some kind of tool part, and some kind of tool that you want to, uh, well, enhance. In this case, I've got something rather boring and bland that's not going to make any sense. I'm putting in here an obsidian pickaxe. This is just an example. And in this case, I want to give it the ability that Ardite will grant it if given on a head, which is stonebound. For those that are curious, stonebound means that it mines faster as it wears out, but it does less damage. Well, who cares? It's on a pick. You want it to mine faster. So that's the idea. And you'll notice that it looks exactly the same. It doesn't replace the tool head or any, in any way, shape, or form. It will just give it the special ability that the material grants it. And that is the beauty of the embossment. And it, with this, this basically allows you to make a whole lot of really cool new uh, enhancements. Now, once I do this, if I get another uh, pick and I, I try to and emboss it again. It does say the tool already has an embossment. It can have only one. Uh, you can even try replacing the uh, tool rod in this case. And you can, let's see here, I'll grab this and it will say, nope, same thing, you can only have one. But you can still replace the parts. If I take all those out of here, I can still replace that handle, make it a, a wooden handle if I want. I can even replace the uh, pick head. Uh, let's grab this, make it a stone pick head doesn't really matter. It's going to turn it into, you know, the, the remaining parts of the duratase because of the binding in there is still obsidian. But you can see it's ecological and cheapskate for the wood and the stone I replaced, durate for the obsidian binding, and it still has that stone bound, embo stone bound embossment on there. It's difficult for me to say for some reason. But uh, that's the idea behind it, which it's really, really nice. I mean, first and foremost, like I said, it doesn't take any modifier slots. Secondly, um, well, it, it's just really strong with how you can make this work, but not too strong. I do have some examples so that I can show you guys some good ideas of things that will work. Uh, now, in this case, I have a Night Slime Pig Iron Matic, and it's one of my favorite tools to use, if only because I tend to use it as a multi-tool. I know it's just a glorified hoe that can also chop some wood at a decent speed. In this case, I've got a, um, if I hold control, I can see all the different parts. I've got a paper tool rod, a night slime axe head, pig iron shovel head, and you'd think, well, what, what's the point of this, Valen? I mean, this is a multi-tool in the fact that it's food. It also can mine dirt very simply. It can hoe dirt and it can also mine wood. So it, it's kind of a, an everything except for a pick type deal. And its damage is okay. It's very slow to swing, but like I said, it's more of a multi-tool. In this case, it's an unbreaking one because it has writable two. Now, if you see it has an embossment of paper, that means that I added a paper shovel head to this, uh, or I could have added a paper um, uh, axe head in this case, because a, uh, where is it? This here requires a tool rod, a, uh, what is it, a, a, an axe head, and of course the, um, let's go back over here, uh, the shovel head for a mattock. Now, this, the reason I did this is so that I could actually grant an extra uh, level of 
upgrades to it so I could make it a writable two, therefore giving me five modifier slots and I could put five reinforcement modifiers on there, making it unbreaking. So who cares that it's got a paper ha uh, handle, but it's still got a decent speed. Now I go into survival mode, I walk over here and I've got a little bit of dirt uh, nearby. I'm, I'm facing the wrong direction, sorry. I have a little bit of dirt over here. You can see it goes at a really good, really good pace. And of course I can hoe dirt, and dig it back up. It's really nice. I mean, this is a very good multi-tool, uh, useful hoe that can be used to dig wood and dirt. And it's going to dig um, dirt, or sorry, uh, wood at just about the same speed. And once again, this is just an example. I mean, no, it's not one of those giant, uh, you know, hoe or one of those uh, giant axes that you can make that will fell the entire tree in, in one fell swoop. But once again, it's a pretty decent uh, multi-tool, and the fact that it's also got pig sl or um, a uh, pig iron ingot in there for the uh, the shovel makes it baconlicious and tasty. So if I you know kill mobs with it, they may have a chance of dropping bacon, or I might get bacon from you know drops of of mining things. But uh, it also could be eaten by me while walking around and holding on to it. So therefore, this is a kind of a source of food in a way. As I'm using it, it will therefore replenish itself without losing any durability. So that's just one example. Another example I have here, now I I really like this one, uh, is the ranged weaponry, but I'm going to cover the uh, this, this hammer here next. Uh, I also have some really nice, uh, you know, combos for uh, melee weapons but let's let's go into stick with mining for the moment because we just did like some dirt and some wood uh, you've got your uh, uh, this is an ardite paper cobalt hammer of course it's a bit bit of a mouthful but you can see here it's got a night slime tough tool rod which gives it uh, let's put it up here an unnatural ability. The tool mines faster the higher its mining level is above the required one. So if I'm mining stone with a cobalt level tool, it's going to mine faster. Uh, this one here is also got an ardite hammerhead, which gives it the stone bound ability. Your tool absolutely loves stone. It mines faster as it wears out, but does less damage. You notice the durability here is one. There's a reason for this. Uh, so as it does less damage, who cares? It's a hammer that's used for mining 3x3 three three areas underground. So, therefore, stonebound, not the other one. If you go with uh, Ardite, there are, whoops, if I could spell it right, uh, there are multiple things here like Petromore. Petromore will actually heal it as you mine things. You don't want that. You just want stonebound, which is a much better part uh, in this case. So, therefore, you want the items that are on the head. Now, it doesn't look like there's a, an Ardite head, but that's because this has been reinforced and therefore allowing it to, when I reinforced it with the uh, reinforcement plates, it covered up the color of that head. Uh, now, on top of that, I've got a paper large plate. That is just to give it writable one. And also kind of, it, I guess it brought the durability down a little bit, but you know, it, I needed something on there to enable it to have at least writing one. Now writing two, it comes in a little bit later. Uh, then I added a cobalt large plate just to increase the durability and the speed of the tool with momentum. Momentum, uh, mining blocks, increases your speed as long as you keep going. So therefore, the faster you, the more you mine, the faster and faster it goes, which is really nice. Uh, but it also gives you a big bonus to your durability, which was very important in this case. So moving on from that, I also have on there an embossment, which in here it says embossment paper. That gave me writing too, allowing me once again to add in maximum amount of reinforcement modifiers, allowing this to be an unbreaking tool. So you might think, well, what? good is this going to be? Well, let me get down to a little cave area that I have down here, and I can show you just how fast this thing can mine. Now, there's no redstone on this because I used all the modifiers to make it unbreaking, but who cares because if I just mine things, it's just going to do work. I mean, you see how good this is. It's it's going really fast, and it, it it's just really handy. I mean, look at this. This is a good combination here, and I did wear it down to one durability before doing so, so that it would get the maximum bonus. Let me get back up to the top. Here we are. Now back in here, I toss this in here, and you can see stone bound speed plus 6.83. The more durability I had maximum, and the least amount of durability I could have before it breaks, would give me the best stone bound speed. Combine that with momentum and unnatural, and you've got yourself a pretty fast mining 
high-end tool that will last you forever. It's beautiful. Now there are other combinations that you could easily come up with, but there are some things that you should be aware of. In this case, let's put this in here, and I'm going to replace that Ardite head with a Cobalt head, and oh, wait, what's this? Not enough durability to remove parts. 131 more durability required. So you can replace the parts, but they have to have more durability than the existing parts that you're replacing if you're doing so. And of course, if you're using paper parts, you can't re remove those if you've used up all the modifiers for them already because it's just not going to let you uh, do that uh, because, well, you, you can't undo the modifiers in that fashion. Uh, so let's go on to something a little bit more interesting. As we're getting a little bit closer to combat, we'll jump into melee. Now I've got some spiders here. Spiders are going to work perfectly. I have a combination here where I don't even need to attack the spider except for to get it to aggro on me. So I'm just going to punch it uh, once I equip my shield and I'm going to punch it with its own egg. There we go. And it's going to kill itself like that. Do you notice how how much how much health it has? Punch it once, and it and it had no no health left. That was a lot of damage just from a block, and a tiny bit of fire damage. I mean, what the heck happened there? A lot of combinations. Allow me to show you how well this new embossment can work for you. Uh, so first and foremost, let me take off this shield because I can't really access it there. Now, if I put the shield in here, you can see. It is currently made up of just a magma slime tool rod and a magma slime sign, pe sign plate, so it's it's okay. You know, it therefore gets flammable and superheat, which is blocking, blocks fire damage, and sets the attacker on fire. So therefore, that's what set the uh, the spider on fire. Superheat deal bonus damage to enemies on fire. Aha! There's a little bit of an extra bonus there. Plus. It's got an embossment of spiky. So what I did is I put this in here. I added in a tool rod. Uh, of cactus. There we go. Like so. Now it's telling me that it's already been embossed, but this is basically the idea. I added in a cactus tool rod, giving it the spiky effect, and therefore meaning that blocking deals damage to the attacker, which makes it really effective. Now, here's something else I'm going to show you. Uh, let me put down another spider, equip my shield, punch the spider, and I'm going to defend, and you'll see that this guy's lasting much longer. You can see, sure, he's taking some fire damage, bouncing around and so on, but if I if I hit this guy and hold on to this sword at the same time, that spider pretty much almost instantly expires. Reason for that is because the sword has some bonuses on it as well. Let's take a look at this sword. This one here has a manilin blade. It has a cactus, um, actually here, a bone tool rod uh, is the handle. It's got a manilin sword blade and a cactus wide guard. Now, of course, you're getting the uh, the tool damage is increased from the uh, bone handle. You've got insatiable for the manilin blade, which is giving it, uh, you know, during combat you deal more and more damage, but also consume more and more durability. That's more going to be for the the damage value that you do when swinging the sword, as well as if you need to hit an enemy multiple times. It's not really going to help you in blocking, but it does increase the damage that you do overall. Uh, spiky of course, will enhance any kind of blocking damage, which is what I'm also doing with my shield. And then superheat, deal bonus damage to enemies on fire. Well, guess what? If you've got spiky superheat shield and you've got spiky superheat sword, guess what you're doing? You're killing things just by uh, kind of holding these things and blocking. It's <laughs> really, really effective. So if, if you have a, you therefore now have protection against ranged attacks, you can still fight enemies if, it, if they're not dying instantly from the blocking, but just by holding these weapon, this weapon and shield, you are already uh, quite a force to be reckoned with. Now let's go on to some other interesting combinations here. I have in my inventory, let's, let's move this stuff out of the way here. We have some shuriken. And these are, these are the bee's knees here. This, this is good stuff. Uh, so I've got three different kinds. They're very similar, and they can be used in any situation you really want to, you know, for, primarily for just killing things. But I have here, um, let's actually put them in place, and you can see the stats they have. Uh, actually, that's a little bit high. Can I get it on the screen? No, it, it's difficult to see. But um, I, I have an end knife, pig iron knife blade, or uh, an end knife blade, pig iron knife blade, prismarine knife blade, and a manilin knife blade. 
Now, the bonuses with these is, one, of course, anytime that there's pig iron, you have potential to be able to eat these. And these have also been reinforced. What I did is I took and embossed a, uh, a shuriken with a paper knife blade. And what that does, because anytime you put a knife blade on a shuriken, you get both the head and the handle bonuses, You it automatically gives you writing too, just from embossing it with paper, which is amazing and fantastic and wonderful. It's it's everything, all the above. Now, in this case, uh, the end uh, knife blade allows you to do two things. One, you let's put it up here. The alien, uh, it enhances all the bil abilities of it. The attack, the uh, ammunition, basically the durability, as well as the, um, the at or, well, the attack damage, I guess. So it it's going to be the durability and the uh, attack damage. It might also decrease the uh, speed to shoot it a little bit as well. But that does take some time. We're talking like 15, 20 minutes in game while you're, you've got it in your inventory. So that is something you want to look into. Uh, on top of that, we have interference, which will prevent Enderman from spawning. So allow me to demonstrate this. Uh, I will actually go into game mode one so he doesn't attack back. But you can see there's an Enderman here. And I can shoot him, and he can't really go anywhere because of interference, which is just, it's just a wonderful thing. That, that's always good when you've got teleporting enemies. That's going to stop them from doing so. Uh, now you also have your Baconlicious and Tasty. So just by holding this thing, if your food starts running low, you will start eating, and you have a possibility of gaining bacon drops from your foes. And then, of course, I chose the Prismarine Knife Blade for Jagged. Every point durability loss increases damage. You notice that the ammunition on this is 1 and Aquadynamic. The tool is unhindered by water and loves rainy evenings. Well, that really doesn't make a difference. I'm not really mining with this tool. It's more or less for the Jagged, which you just use it up until it's down to 1 ammunition before you uh, then emboss it with a paper knife blade and then add in 5 reinforcement modifiers and you have an infinite... And pig iron, prismarine, manilin, shuriken, for example. Uh, and then, of course, you add in the manilin uh, so that it's insatiable and cold-blooded. You get a really big hit on the first uh, on the first hit, and then insatiable just increases the damage over time. Now, this is an example of one of them. Another one is going to be a bone magma slime, prismarine, manilin, shuriken. This, of course, is going to add in different stuff. Uh, it's been reinforced in a similar manner, where it's embossed with uh, paper and then added in a whole bunch of reinforcement modifiers. This one's going to give you your Fractured and Splintering, which is going to increase the damage, your Super Heat and Flammable, which is going to increase the damage against uh, Burning Foes, uh, plus your Jagged and Insatiable. Now, in each of these cases, I did test them all out, and I believe that the uh, the Interference, or the, the End Knife Blade, is a requisite, in my opinion. But if you haven't gone to the end, a Bone Knife Blade will do. But I am going to say that that one does subpar damage, just barely, but just barely. But then again, the ability to shoot Enderman is just going to be really strong. Um, if you go with these ones here, they're very similar. It all depends if you need a food source or if you're more interested in doing slightly more damage, then I recommend you go with your uh, End Magma Slime Prismarine Manila Shuriken, which is just going to be an, uh, an end knife... Uh, or Endstone Knife, Magma Slime Knife, Prismarine Knife, and Manilin Shuriken. And then, of course, same thing. You put it in here, you emboss it with paper, uh, so or a paper knife, so that you can therefore gain uh, writable two on it. Then you reinforce it five times, and you got yourself in, you know, tons of, you know, a, a invincible... The, I mean, I'm sure I'm in uh, creative right now, but you can just keep on throwing this thing out. Any kind of uh, short range, ranged weaponry is going to be uh, fantastic in this case. So let me put down... Uh, a little bit of this. And no, these have not been enhanced with any kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, quartz or anything like that. But, I mean, there you go, 42, 35, 29, 22, and then he's down into regular hearts. So a few <laughs> a few shots, and I, I could, you can just spam this thing. I mean, I'm just holding the button down. Pew, 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 pew. So you can really just demolish groups of enemies with these shuriken that will last you forever. Though it is rather end game ish because it does require prismarine, which is not exactly easy to find in your vanilla setting, uh, end stone, which means you had to have gone to the end, manilin, which means you would have had to have mined in the uh, nether, and of course, magma slime, which most likely will have had to have been found in the nether as well. So these are dangerous materials to obtain, but uh, well worth it in the end uh, for making yourself uh, practically an in invincible short range. Uh, 
destructive wheel of doom. So uh, with that, I'm going to finish off on the bows. Now, I did not do anything with crossbows. I mean, there's tons of other tools and things I could really go over, but I just wanted to show you guys that uh, uh, I enhanced this pig iron paper longbow, which is pig iron paper, and it has an ardite plate on it, uh, just to show you here. Uh, so therefore, and it's got, just got string bow strings. There, there's nothing fancy with the bow strings. Uh, in these cases, but there's that one. This one here is just uh, pig iron and paper with string, bowstring. But this one I did enhance with five levels of uh, haste. So it uh, therefore it has writable too because it's just got the paper limb, which automatically gives you both benefits. Uh, Baconlicious, I, I will end up eating it. So it's kind of a downside, but the uh, pig iron damage bonus is just so well worth it. Uh, Petromore doesn't really make a difference. That just uh, recovers some of the durability bonus on there. Uh, and the light weight is what you really want. Uh, it increases your overall speed of your tool when mining and attacking. So that's the embossment. I took a, a cobalt plate, put it in here, embossed it on there, and I also hasted this thing up. And it now shoots at a pretty decent rate. I mean, it does take a second to launch it out. But you can see I am now shooting, and it goes really, really good distance, depending on the different arrows I have. Uh, now I also have this short bow. Problem with short bows right now is that they don't get embossed. This one is not embossed. There is no embossment on here. It doesn't even say it over there. I don't know if that's a glitch or not, but still you should, if in this case I would, I actually spent the five levels because the short bow shoots so darn fast as it is. I mean, look at that. That's, it's pretty ridiculous for a short bow, which is a good mid, mid to long range. And then of course your long bow is just really good for long range, uh, sniping, but the, uh, short bow if this is fixed in the future, uh, I would just add in a cobalt bow limb just to in reduce its draw speed even further. But currently any kind of uh, those doesn't work. And I, I turn this reinforced, so therefore it's also a food source and I can use it to attack with. Uh, putting any kind of interference or anything like that on this isn't going to make a difference because the bow is, it, it, it thinks that you're attacking with the bow itself, like like smashing things like that, you know, instead of actually it applying to the arrows. In which case, the arrows. Uh, let's let's grab this one here. I have a manilin arrow with splitting. Actually, here a manilin arrow. It's a bone arrow shaft, manilin arrow head, feather fletching, and it has had an embossment of an end rod. Now this is not ideal in my mind. The reason being is because if you look at the accuracy on this, it is a longbow meant for sniping, and it is doing really well. It's not as easy to see though. So if I take something like a short bow and start shooting with this, you can see the two little dots of where the arrow is going. It kind of shoots everywhere because of the splintering effect. One of them goes somewhere in the middle, the other one does not. So I, I don't really like the splitting as much. Uh, it's unlikely to actually uh, do any good. It, it's possible you might hit another enemy with it. If you hit the same enemy with it, you're not really doubling the damage as much. But I do think that the other two versions are pretty good. Uh, this one here and this one here are very similar with slight differences. This one here is an end rod arrow shaft, manilin arrow head with a feather fletching. And so is this one. They both have different embossings though. This one has an embossment of uh, a, a um, what is it, a ender um, arrowhead. Let me look up uh, arrowheads here. There we go, uh, an end arrowhead. This one here has an embossment of a prismarine arrowhead. Each one has their own benefits. Of course, with the, the one that has the end arrowhead enhancement, you can then shoot endermen and they cannot escape you. Uh, they will have to fight you and you can shoot them, finally, and they can't, you know, fight back. Uh, but then if you switch, let's do this and go with the other one, the Jagged. Over time, because I'm in creative right now, these are not enhanced in any way. They have three modifiers still left on them. There's no paper parts enabling you to uh, reinforce these so that they become invincible. So therefore, um, you will lose durability over time. So therefore, the Jagged might be beneficial to you if you're not really running into many teleporting enemies. Uh, therefore, as you start using it, you will do more damage over time to your foes as your uh, durability wears down on your arrow. And that's 
pretty much going to cover it. Oh, oh that's in my face there. Uh, for today's bit by bit on Tinker's Construct 2, a little bit of an update. I, it's, it's great to get back into Tinker's Construct 2 uh, for, for a little bit here. I hope you guys enjoyed this and that you understand everything I was trying to show you. Uh, there's so many different combinations you can go with. I highly recommend you give this a try and mess around with it yourself. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I love the, the possibility for all the combos. So don't forget to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others. I think they'll enjoy this content too. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.